Hey everybody, welcome to another video. First of all, Merry Christmas. It's literally Christmas Day. It is 2.20 p.m. and I've just got a call from a customer. He's also a friend, but I've just got a call saying that the PlayStation 5 that I sold for Christmas for the kids, they've turned it on, they've downloaded the game, and it stopped working. So unfortunately, now here I am, literally on Christmas Day, and I've got to do a warranty repair. I can't leave them in the dark, and I've got to get this working. If I don't get it working, I've got to replace it, because I can't leave their kids without a PS5, especially considering they've just opened one. So, yeah, I'm kind of stuck, because uh, the only PS5 I've got is an exploitable one, and it might come to it where I end up having to replace the PS5 that I've got in my hand, with an exploitable one and update it. So with that being said, if you are new to the channel and you enjoy this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to organize your repair, I do stand by my warranties. I don't get many things returned under warranty, but when I do, I do stand by it. But if you do want to organize your repair, you can get in touch using the website in the video description, consolefix.co.uk, where you can book it in or contact me if you've got any questions about the repair. You can also buy parts and tools for PlayStation 5s and other consoles at consolefix.shop. Again, link in the video description, and you can buy all of the parts and tools that you might need to repair your own console as well. So with that being said, let's get into this repair. So, just to show that it is literally Christmas Day, I don't want people to say that I'm lying just for the clicks, but yeah, refresh that, as you can see, it is literally Christmas Day. I don't want people to say that I'm lying just to get clicks and things like that, um, so I just thought I'd prove that. But anyway, we've got a single beep and no power. Yeah, so it's just beeping, all right. Okay, let's get it apart and we'll see what we can do about fixing it then. So, like I said, I really didn't want to work today. You know, it's one of them things, uh, don't really have a choice, not happy about it. I wanted to spend the time with my kids. I was gonna edit a video later on once we'd all sat down and eaten and things. I have just finished preparing uh, Christmas dinner, but I wanted to sit down and chill and have a day off, but apparently there's no rest for the wicked. Okay, we're in like Flint, and I've got my multimeter set up on the screen, so what I can do now is, first of all, just check for some voltages and just see if I can figure out what's going on with it. So, we're supposed to expect some certain power rails, and the fastest way to determine what's going on with these when they've got a single beep but won't turn on is to check the power rails first. There shouldn't have been any reason why this failed. I don't know what I did to it when I initially repaired it. I guess I'll find that out as I go along, but yeah, I don't know why this would have failed, but let's just check a few things. So we've got a five volt line there. We've got a 3.3 .3 there. We've got a five there. We've got a 3.3 .3 there. We've got a five there. We've got a two there. Uh, this should be 2.5 when I press the power button. Okay, we're not getting that 2.5. We're also not getting a 1.1. Uh, so we're not getting a 2.5. We're not getting a 1.1 at the south bridge. Probably not getting a five volt here. Nope, okay. I'm wondering if we've maybe got an issue well, if it's not liquid metal, I'm wondering if we've maybe got an issue with something here. Hopefully we can figure this out, because like I said, I really don't want to have to replace this, but I will if I have to. Uh, okay. It could very well be a liquid metal spill. I'll have to inspect that closer. Let's just do a couple of tests around this side of the board, see if there's anything here that I can see. So I'm going to go into diode mode on my multimeter. That's going to give me a quick and accurate reading of some of the components. Okay, that area is not short. That's not short. That's not short. That's not short. HDMI encoder doesn't appear short. Right, okay. So none of that seems short. All of that seems okay. 
Let's just have a look around the IPU for any spilt liquid metal. Just see if there's been some sort of a knock. Hmm, we do have some liquid metal around here. Alright, what's the deal with that then? Let's clean that up. I'm contemplating just completely removing this and conform or coating it. Because that's going to protect it long term as well. Because this is a really poor design that Sony do with the APU anyway. I've got some liquid metal that's splashed around here as well. I think I'm just going to remove this plastic. So I'll heat it up. I've got my hot air at like 180 degrees Celsius. 180 degrees Celsius seems really high, but the thing with hot air is hot air is sporadic and it's not going to be putting 180 degrees Celsius of direct heat on the APU. So I'm going to remove this completely and I'm hoping to see some liquid metal underneath, to be honest. Uh, there's little bits here and there. Nothing really that would give me cause for concern. However, liquid metal... It, it can get in all of the tiny gaps, to be honest. You know, if it is liquid metal, then yes, I'd be pretty pissed off, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. You know, I'd be pretty pissed off if I, if my Christmas day has been disturbed because someone's been a little bit rough with it. Okay, so I've cleaned that. So let's just try it now quickly. Let's just hope that was the cause. So I'll just be careful putting this back on. And... If I can get this fixed, then I'll conform or coat that entire area. Okay. Please work. No. It's not that. I was kind of hoping it would be nice and easy. Right, let's just have a look around the Wi-Fi area. See if there's any issue with any of the caps or anything around there. I'm pretty sure, looking at this board, I'm pretty sure, because I can see signs that I've replace quite a few components i'm pretty certain that i've basically done uh, quite a lot of work to this i think this was the nightmare job the one where another technician screwed everything up and i had to replace a load of components to get it to work no nope, there's no issues around the wi-fi i see Yeah, I'm not finding anything. Let's spin the board around. Okay, let's just check the RAM. RAM appears fine, 0.08, that's fine. It's a low impedance line. Uh, so what about this area that I've already replaced once then? Oh, hello. Don't know if that's normal. Let me get another board to test that with. It's gotta be an EDM010 board because the different circuits on the EDM020. Right. Okay, let's just pop this to one side. Okay, apparently it is normal. 0.03, or at least I think it is, unless this console don't turn on. No, this console turns on. And we're supposed to get, I think it's 0.8 volts. Um, oh, hang on. Just for, the, just for the record, I can't use this console. This console doesn't update. The console won't update at all. Yeah, 0 0.8 volts and it's supposed to be 2.5 out. Or oh, that might be 2.5 in and 0 0.8 out. So, yeah, that would explain the low impedance. But no, I can't use this one because this one doesn't update. Uh, this is going to be a future video. But yeah, that's normal. That sucks. Thought I was onto something then. So I've got a short somewhere, but the thing is where? That's the problem, is finding out where. Uh, actually, let me just check. Am I meant to get anything at all on that area? Um, and I mean before it boots up, not, not after it boots up. I don't think I am. I think everything gets activated afterwards there. Yeah, I'm not meant to get anything until it turns on. Any input at all? No. Sadly not. That doesn't enable until it turns on. So I can't test that area at all. Ah, oh, this sucks. This does suck. I wonder... Hmm. 
I don't think it's going to be the power supply, but I'm, oh, yeah, I think I need to rule that out, don't I? Um, just to make 100% sure. I know this power supply inside this one is good. I do need to rule it out, and I've just seen this one turn on, so I will at least try it. It's got to at least be worth a try, just to make sure. No. I kind, I'm kind of stumped, I'll be honest. I don't understand how it can go from a perfectly working console to just dead an hour after it was initially used, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's very confusing. Let's just have a look at my boot sequence. So... When we apply power, we're supposed to get an initial boot sequence where the console will jump to 300 milliamps and then drop back down. So let's see if we're getting that. No, we are not. We definitely have a short on this board somewhere. So we're initially getting 23 milliamps and then it's just dropping back down to zero and something is kicking into protect it from further issue so i'm applying 12 volts to the power supply here and yeah we are getting an initial spike but only 23 milliamps there's definitely a short on this board all right so i'm back in diode mode uh i think i just need to scan around here and just see if i can find anything out of the ordinary you know, maybe a fuse has failed somewhere, or... Yeah, I don't know. Okay, we have something here. I've got something to go on now. Uh, right, I've just been hunting around. Um, it actually didn't take me that long, but I've got a what appears to be a short circuit here on this dialogue I see. Let's have a look into that, shall we? So here's the area here in question. And as you can see by the size of this trace, that's not any kind of data line or anything like that. So if we go into diode mode on the multimeter, we are dead short, dead short. Now, if we go to this board that turns on, now, I will say, this board that I've got here, it turns on, but it doesn't boot. It goes to safe mode and it won't let me install an operating system. So, like I said, that's going to be a future video. But, one thing we can rely on is that all of the primary ICs are going to be working, right? Because it turns on. So, we, we should at least get a boot. If we look here on that same cap, 0.29 so that shouldn't be short but it is so yeah i don't know if it's going to be that dialogue ic i have known those to fail in the past however the dialogue ic is also linked to the other side of the board so it's linked to this area just here which is where we get five volts and um, then two volts out so what we can do in this situation rather than sitting here and you know pulling off components i will get this back in focus but rather than sitting here and just pulling off components what we can do is we can inject some voltage and just see where it gets hot essentially what we can do if we set the bench power supply to one volt and we force current through that circuit electricity will always take the path with the least resistance to ground so in this case the least resistance to ground is going to be the shorted component so that should tell me exactly what's shorted pretty quickly so let's do that i'm actually quite happy now because we've got something to go on now whether or not it's going to be a fixable issue is a different question but we'll see so that was a close one i'm set to 12 volts on my bench power supply so let's go for one volt into that cap there we get 156 milliamps that's not enough we need more than that so let's go for 1.5 volts 230 240 milliamps 
So we'll go up in steps until I get get to a current where I feel like it's going to actually show me some sort of heat. I've got 600 milliamps now, and my safe bridge is getting hot. Damn it! Safe bridge looks like it's failed. 45 degrees Celsius on the safe bridge. So it is looking like that short, which yeah, it kind of sucks because that's not a cheap repair. Let's just have a look. Let's see if I can see any more. Let's see if I've got a short on this Ethernet. No, I do not. Okay, well, either way, that is showing up as short. So it looks like I might have to change that, which sucks, to be honest. Hopefully, this is the issue. Um, I know I said it's not a cheap fix and that it does suck, but. Either way, I just want to get to the bottom of this and get it fixed and back out the door working for the kids that have now got no PS5 for Christmas. Actually, did I change this safe bridge? Maybe. I'll soon know. Because there's a fair bit of flux under there. Yeah, I've changed that safe bridge. That safe bridge has been replaced. That's leaded solder on there. Do we still have a short around here? No, we do not. That short is gone. We're gonna have to replace the safe bridge. That sucks a little bit, but that has cleared the short. So hopefully it's gonna fix the issue. I'm gonna grab a donor board. One donor board incoming. So let me just make sure 100% that this donor board doesn't work before I do anything. Okay, that one, I think I need to revisit that board. So if I've got another board, then I'll take it from a different board. Okay, I've got one here with a missing BIOS chip, so that means that I can use this one. Okay, I just added some flux there. And there we go. Okay, there we go. There is a replacement safe bridge. I'm going to put the board to one side for a minute, just while I get this prepped. So what I'm going to need to do with this is I'm going to need to reball this. So the way this chip is made up is there are about 380 little solder balls on the bottom. That's called a BGA, a ball grid array. So it's an array of solder balls which make up the contacts between the chip itself and the board. Yes, they're annoying and I've had loads of people say this before. Yes, BGAs are annoying, they are difficult to work with. However, you wouldn't have the technology that you've got today if it wasn't for BGA. And apparently I'm a rhymer. But uh, anyway, yeah, you wouldn't have the technology that we've got if it wasn't for BGA, uh, because we just wouldn't get that many contacts on a chip. Uh, you know, if you've got this same size chip and it's um, either solder pads or pins, then you're probably looking at 20 per side, so probably 80 contacts. So you wouldn't have half the amount of technology, that's why things can get smaller. Um, so yes, it's annoying, but at the same time, it is a marvel of technology. But anyway, I'm rambling, let's get this reboard.
There we go. Let's check this area again. Yep, we've got no short there. Let's see if it turns on. If it don't turn on now, then I don't have a clue. So I won't put it all back together. I'll just test it like this because if it does work, then I've got to conform or coat that APU. So I may as well just put it back together like this and hope for the best. All right, moment of truth. God damn it. Nope, nothing. Nothing at all. Right, do we get any rails missing now, though? Let's have a look. 5 volts, 3.3, 5, 3.3, 5, 2, nothing. we still got that 2.5 volt rail missing. And that 1.1. Well... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's annoying. We definitely had a short on that safe bridge. We definitely had an issue there. 100%. Something else has failed. Something's caused that safe bridge to fail. And I don't have a clue what. And this sucks because now I've got to give away a exploitable PS5. I've got to update that PS5 and then I've got to give it away. Or not give it away, but I've got to, I've got to replace this console with that. Um, I'm not going to write this off yet. I've got it working once. I'm going to try and get it working again. Um, it sucks. It also sucks that I've had to work on Christmas Day. But these things happen. Part of doing business, unfortunately, and there is absolutely nothing I can do other than replace the console, do good by the customer, and then try and get this working at a later date, because at the minute, I am stumped. I don't have a clue. But, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. There's not really a lot that I can do. But, with that being said, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up there, Mr. Coder. Past Coder. Christmas Day Coder. Sad Coder. We've got a problem. Well, actually, we might have a solution. So, I was editing the video. It's 10.58am right now, um, on Boxing Day. And I've just finished editing the video. And then I thought, you know what? Let's just have a quick look. Let's have a quick look. And I think I've found something. Well, actually, I know I've found something. But whether it's a solution, I don't know. But I'm going to try and fix it because... If I can fix it, then at least that way, then I've got a working PS5. And yeah, I've already updated that console. I've already given it to the customer, which means I am down an exploitable console, which does suck. But if this works, at least I won't be £500 in the hole because right now I am. And yeah, I'm kind of sad about it. So yeah, I think I found something. I'll go back to the overhead and show you. Um, and then we'll see if we can get this fixed. So, yeah, it is the same console. As you can see, I'll just show you that it is still faulty. Um, I don't know why I feel like I need to prove myself all the time, but I just do. But anyway, yeah, as I said, currently it's Boxing Day. And uh, I got up bright and early to edit the video because... By the end of the day, I plan to have ripped this concert, this uh, workshop apart. So over the next week, I'm taking a week off. I'm ripping the workshop apart. I'm going to organise everything and hopefully get some, you know, hopefully get this place looking a little bit better over the Christmas break. But yeah, anyway, just show you that this isn't working. So you can see I've got the LED plugged in and etc, etc, etc. It's not working. But basically, I was editing the video and I just thought to myself, I've actually just finished editing the video, check this out. As you can see, I've just finished editing the video, there's me saying bye. And uh, yeah, it was uh, pretty much done, the entire thing was done, edited, um, just for context. This is how heavily my videos are edited, look at all these cuts in here, all these cuts. That's how hard I work, okay? <laughs> but anyway, 
yeah, I just finished editing the video and um, then I just thought to myself, you know what, let's just take the board out and let's just have a look at a couple more things. And yeah, I think I found something. So let's just take a look. So if you've watched any of my PS5 videos, you'll know that there's a few circuits which are quite problematic on the PS5. And one of those circuits is the 5 to 3.3 volt regulator area. Um, I did actually, I kept it out of the video because it was pointless, it didn't fix anything. I did try reflowing this south bridge after I'd installed it because I thought, well, it might not have gone down properly, etc, etc, etc. So I thought to myself, you know what, let's just reflow that and see if it fixes it, but... No, it didn't. It didn't solve anything. But one of the areas which is quite problematic, you'll see that I haven't done anything because I wanted to get back to my family. And to be honest, I was so annoyed at myself. Not Well, not at myself, but at this console. I didn't even eat Christmas dinner yesterday. I had a couple of bites and that was it. I just couldn't be bothered. I was pretty stressed out. But... Yeah, I reflowed that anyway, um, but if you've watched any of my PS5 videos, you'll know that there's some problematic areas with the PS5. So you've got the Wi-Fi area, you've got this chip here, you've got this chip here, you've got this cap down here, you've got the HDMI encoder, and then you've got this chip here. And what I've found is one of those very problematic areas, i.e. F7502, the fuse is gone. So I think what's happened is when I've injected voltage, it's taken out that fuse. It normally takes out F7003, which is around where I found the short, but it looks like it's taken out F7502. So let me just show you that. So here is the area. So it's one of these SBV chips, and I sell these on my website, actually. Um, it's the F7002 um, chip. So you've got three of these on the board. You've got one just here. You've got one just up here, and then you've got one on the other side of the board just here. So there's three in total, right? And these chips here are all 5 to 3.3 volt uh, regulators, and they've all got their own fuse. Well, actually, no, sorry, this one and the one on the uh, other side of the board has, and this one it uses the same fuse as... F7002, so it's connected directly to that circuit, right? But this one, it looks like I've changed this fuse before. It looks like I've already changed this fuse. The soldering, I must admit, is not great. But if we go into continuity mode on the multimeter, so that means we get a beep when we complete a circuit. And if we go from here to here, we get continuity. If we go across to the fuse, there's no continuity, and there should be. So we should get a beep there, and we don't. So I don't know if this is going to be the cause, I don't know if it's going to fix the issue, but either way, I'm going to keep this in the video because it is a problem which I've managed to find um, relating to this power issue. Okay, so there's the faulty fuse gone. Here's a donor board. And if we go for continuity here, we're meant to get continuity. So obviously from there to there, because it's the same trace. And that fuse works. So let's put this fuse onto the board we're working with. Do need a bit of flux putting on here. There we go. Okay, I'll clean that up properly later on. Let's just make sure we didn't damage that fuse by swapping it out. Nope, perfect. Okay, moment of truth. For the final time, is it going to work? I've still got bedhead, what the hell. Oh well. Anyway, for the final time, is this going to work? I really hope so. I sincerely 
hope it does. So again, I still need to conform or coat this on the IPU to protect it, but hey ho, it is what it is. I will do it later on if I get it working. Please work. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's freaking awesome. Ow. Ow, I just gagged myself with plash. Ow. That's awesome. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, there we go. I can give it a full test later. Oh. Oh, the emotional roller coaster. Okay, this needs a proper clean. And it also needs some conformal coating around that area. There we go. All right, that isopropyl alcohol will dry. I just need to clean up this as best I can, this liquid metal. And then what I can do then is just conformal coat the APU and that'll protect it in the future from any liquid metal spills. There we go. All right, that is booting up. Let's just switch over to the capture card. We'll make sure it displays and call it good. Boom, there we go. And it's even got the right date look, or rather the right time. That's what I'm talking about. And now, I know why it failed. It's because they're a FIFA player. Every console I get in that fails has got FIFA on it. Hello, Milo. Come to say hello, mate. My kitty's come to say hello, just at the right time. Say hi, Milo. Anyway, now I'm happy. I'm still a little bit annoyed because I gave out a exploitable PS5 yesterday. I updated it to the latest firmware and gave it to the customer so as it didn't ruin Christmas for their kids. But it is what it is. I would rather do that than cause someone to not have a console. I could have just given a refund, but that would have been a dick move to make as well. Be quiet, Milo. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that would have been a dick move to make as well because the kid had already opened it for Christmas. I honestly don't have any explanation why this failed, um, truth be told. I don't know why it failed. I don't know why the Southbridge failed, but it just did. And unfortunately... It's just the way it goes. Uh, it's part of doing business, and sometimes you can't help it. One thing I will say is I don't know how much I can rely on this console now. It's already failed twice, technically. It failed once when I bought it, or once before I bought it, and then it failed once since I fixed it. So I don't know whether this is going to work or not. So what I'm going to do is... I've got an autistic five-year-old son, and what I'm going to do is, he's got a PS5, he likes to run around in director mode on GTA, and I know that sounds really bad, but he's got an obsession with fire, uh, fire trucks, so he likes to be dressed as a fireman and just run around and uh, pretend to be a fireman on GTA. He doesn't play online, doesn't go online at all, doesn't have a mic, he just has a PS5, because... Um, yeah, he keeps nicking the other boys' PS5s. But what he keeps doing is he keeps on taking the GTA disc out. So what I might do is, rather than him having a, G a PS5 disc edition, I might sell that and give him this one and just download GTA 5 as a download. Because that way then, this is in my possession if it does fail again, if it did fail again, it's not the end of the world. I could always get my kid another one, or I could potentially repair it, or whatever. And I also get to recoup a little bit of money from what I've lost, because, yes, technically I'm not down, but I am in a way, because that PS5 that I updated yesterday was worth about £150 more to the right buyer. 
it just meant sitting on it for a little while. So I might sell the disc edition, keep this one myself, put GTA 5 on as a digital game, because I do own a digital copy of it as well. And then, yeah, just, you know, just leave it at that. Sell the disc edition, the one that I know works, the one that's been being used for, you know, four or five weeks now uh, by my five-year-old son. And uh, I can trust that one a little bit more than I can trust this one. So, yeah, it might seem a little bit weird, but, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. But, anyway, this is fixed. Um, I don't have a clue why it failed, but it did. So, I've replaced the south bridge. I've replaced that fuse. I think the fuse failed because I was injecting voltage. I don't think those fuses can take it. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. The console now works again, and... Yeah, it, at least it can be used, I suppose. So, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. If you do want to organise a repair, you can do so by heading over to the website in the video description, consolefix.co.uk. I do stand by my warranties. It doesn't happen very often, but I do stand by warranties when they do fail. Um, you know, I don't leave my customers in the dark, and especially not at Christmas. So, consolefix.co.uk, you can book it in there. Or if you want to buy parts for PS5s, Xboxes, or anything else that I'll buy that I can't fix where I've got usable parts, consolefix.shop. There's a link in the video description, that's my online store. You can buy used parts there. Some new parts as well, I do sell some of the chips and things for the PS5, as well as other consoles as well. So, you can head over there and buy the parts that you need. If you do want to support me in any way, then there's a few ways you can do it. There's some donation links in the video description, as well as some affiliate links to both Amazon and AliExpress. They all support me. Or if you want to support me, but you don't have the money to do so, you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch and then becoming a Twitch Prime subscriber completely free. It doesn't cost you a penny if you've got Amazon Prime already, but it does massively help me out. But with that being said, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you have a wonderful holiday, and I'll see you all in the new year. Bye for now.